Welcome to the Smiles Are Wild channel brought to you by Pediatric Dental Associates and Orthodontics. My name is Amy Morgan. We will be bringing you fun and educational videos weekly to help you take better care of your child's oral health care needs at home and on the go. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to see all of our new videos. And remember, it doesn't really matter how you take care of your teeth as long as you take care of them from the beginning. As far as the National Hydration Day, today is actually the day. So Tuesday, June 23rd is National Hydration Day. And so today we're gonna to be discussing that subject from two different perspectives. So first we're gonna kind of cover how just naturally drinking water can help with your overall oral health. So cleaning your mouth and things like that. But then also at the end of the broadcast, we're gonna be discussing how water intake can help with heat exhaustion. And we're getting that information directly from a wonderful resource right here in Northwest Arkansas. And that's the Kendrick Fincher Hydration for Life Program. And they have a wonderful just four step process that they would love for you to be able to review with your family, especially your children that play sports or that are outside a lot. Um, they, they have a really good thing they call the game plan. And so we're going to go over that as quickly at the end of the broadcast. And then I will put a link to their site. Um, they are a nonprofit located right here in Northwest Arkansas. They've been here around 24, 25 years. I'm just kind of promoting the idea that water intake is super important and staying hydrated, especially during sports is super important. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna talk about four reasons why water is really good for your smile. So drinking water is the key to staying properly hydrated, but it's also really, really good for your teeth. Um, so here's a little bit of how you can do that. So water helps to clean your mouth. So number one, water, just generally intake of water is gonna help wash away any food and germs that develop throughout the day. So drinking soda, juice, or other beverages can actually leave sugar behind that can be processed down to form bacteria that causes cavities. Water also helps to dilute the acids in other drinks that you, or foods that you may have consumed. So it's a really good rinsing agent, okay? Uh, number two, we want to make sure that you understand that drinking tap water is a very is key to preventing dental decay. So there is fluoride in most tap water, especially if you're on a city water, and fluoride strengthens your teeth and can be found in most, like I said, city waters. So if you're on well water and you need some fluoride supplements or something like that, definitely talk to your dentist or when you're into our office and we'll help you get that prescription done. Um, there are also a very small number of bottled water brands that do add fluoride. So one of the things that we're seeing is a rise in dental decay because more people are reverting to actual bottled water. So they're not using as much tap water um, that has the added fluoride in it that helps to protect your teeth. So we're doing a lot of more on the go, grabbing the water bottle and things like that. So we just want you to be mindful the bottled water is great. We know that it's filtered and the yummy and a lot of people prefer that, but tap water is also naturally, it's not naturally, it's added fluoride. Your city adds fluoride to the water to help prevent decay. So just think about that when you're at home, try to use your tap water as much as possible. When, we're, when you're on the go, we understand bottled water is sometimes more convenient. Um, but as long as you're drinking water, we, we love to see that. So water can also prevent dry mouth. So a lot of people suffer from a super dry mouth. They're always thirsty or just in general, they don't produce a lot of saliva. Um, so they have what the term is called dry mouth. <clears throat> so staying hydrated helps to produce the right amount of saliva that will then in turn help to prevent bacteria from forming. Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so, I mean, a lot of people, especially with dry mouth, end up getting a lot more decay because the decay um, starts to develop because they have nothing there to help produce saliva, which doesn't help wash away all the bacteria. So people with dry mouth tend to have a higher um, rate of cavities, but by drinking water, you can help to prevent dry mouth and then naturally start um, producing more saliva. And then last but not least, um, here at PDA, you know, we really try to pr promote a healthy um, options for you and your children. So water is calorie free. So it's a way to quench your thirst. It's a way to rinse your mouth. It's a way to do all these things that will not cause a large calorie intake. 
Um, consuming sugary beverages has been a major con contributor to the increasing rate of obesity in the United States, especially in children. So we always try to promote, you know, try to stay away from sodas and juices and things like that. Even milk, milk is wonderful for your body. It's got lots of calcium in it, but even 100% juices and milk have natural sugars in them or sugars that are added. Um, so even when juice, fruit juices may say they're 100% um, fruit juice, it sounds like you're doing this most amazing thing for your kid. And while you're giving them those nutrients, it's also packing on the sugar. So we just want you to be mindful of that with the intake. One of the things that we really suggest for that is that milk and juices are only given at meal times, And when they're kind of walking around, when they're in the stage of a sippy cup or even in their bottles when they're younger, um, sippy cups, bottles, any kind of cup that they may use during the day that's just kind of sitting on your kitchen counter or it's their water bottle or whatever, that that has water in it and not a juice or a milk. Um, that will really help cut down um, the rate that they might get cavities, okay? So one other thing that we always hear is how in the world can I get my child to drink water? So we've come up with four just small things that we think might be able to help. So number one is to get them a special cup. So young children probably are not going to like love drinking out of a large water bottle, but a lot of kids have a sippy cup. Nowadays, you can get personalized cups, you can get fun colors. Um, use that as their special water cup and they can use that cup if they're drinking water. So they only get to use their fun special cup or even a fun straw if they're drinking water. So that's one way to kind of encourage them to drink some more water and just kind of sneak it in there for them. And then at the right age, um, depending on the age of your children, let them get the water directly from the refrigerator tap. If you have one of the refrigerators that dispense the water, um, let them do that. They think that's super fun. Um, and if it was to spill, it's not a huge mess technically. Um, but that is something that even at a young age, they can start getting their own water out of their refrigerator. And that makes them feel a little bit more independent. Um, and then the other thing that I thought was really fun is to set intake goals. So just like we as adults, sometimes you'll see some of your friends keeping up with how much water they're drinking. They'll put the lines on the water bottle to keep up with it. Um, and so you take that idea and combine it with a chore chart or a behavior chart and you make them an intake goal chart. So every time they drink a glass of water during the day, you mark it off on their chart and maybe, you know, at the end of two weeks or whenever they've met a certain number of cups during the month, then they get to go pick out a book or a toy or something like that. Um, <clears throat> but that's just a really healthy way to encourage them to not only drink water, but also to set personal goals. So that one's twofold. And then last but not least, the, one of the most important things you can do for them is to lead by example. So as an adult, as a parent, aunt, uncles, grandmas, whatever, if children see you drinking water, they will drink water, okay? So the more that they see you do, the more they're gonna mimic you. So while sometimes they pick up some of our bad habits, it would not be awful if they picked up some of our good ones as well. So think about that just throughout your day, just you drink water, share a glass of water with them. Um, when they're sitting down to have their water or they're getting their water, like, hey, will you make me a cup too? And you know, just kind of make it fun for them. But that's one of the best ways you can really encourage them to drink water is to show them that you are also doing that. So, you know, if you're gonna go for your Coke or your Dr. Pepper or something like that, you know, maybe verbally say out loud, I'm gonna make a healthy choice today and I'm going to drink the water with you. So that's just something to think about. Those are just four quick tips that we think will help encourage your child, your young children, older children, everyone to kind of get on board with drinking some more water. All right. So now, obviously, our office here is located in Arkansas, Northwest Arkansas. It can get very hot and very humid here on one day and then be cool the next because, you know, Arkansas. But we do know that as the summer progresses into, you know, late July, August, even into September sometimes, it can be really hot. And also with the current state of what's going on in our country and our state with COVID-19, a lot more people are getting outdoors. So, and kids play sports. So some kids are even in year round sports. So they're in sports right now, but we're also heading into, you know, summer football practices and outdoor, um, 
sports practices that, you know, the kids have kind of been off, especially because of COVID-19 and things like that. So they're going to be outside doing activities that are going to make them sweat. It's going to make them get hot. So the best thing you can do for them is hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. So the information I'm about to go over is called the Hydration Game Plan, and it was developed by Kendrick Fincher Hydration for Life Program. And number one is something they're calling your sweat rate. So it's saying to know your sweat rate. And it just says staying properly hydrated is all about maintaining your body's fluid balance so that there's never too much or too little. Athletes need to know how much they sweat and how much they need to drink to replace it. So I like to sum that up as like whatever is going out, you need to be taking in. So they need to be hydrated, okay? Number two is to hydrate before, during, and after your workout. So I know for my child, I always, before he heads to any kind of basketball practice or football practice, I make sure that he's drink, drink at least eight to 12 ounces of water and also has eaten a banana. Um, and that's just something that I've learned kind of helps him. Um, you have your own individual children that probably have their own thing they like to do. Um, but we try to make sure that they're always getting at least one full glass of water prior to practice. And then during practice, we make sure he has a water bottle or access to water. And then afterwards, we'll usually greet him, you know, with another water bottle or a different drink. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. So then as far as the before, during, and after, it just says proper hydration will help you perform at your best and protect you from feeling dehydration serious side effects. And so before, if you hydrate before, it just gives you a head start to help you compete at your best. So if they're hydrated, their body's going to feel better and they're going to be able to more compete, especially in those sports um, arenas and things like that. If you're hydrating during, it gives you the energy to keep going. So again, your body is being replenished with hydration, which is going to help them to keep going. And then after it helps you to replace the fluids and electrolytes or the minerals your body loses in sweat like sodium, potassium, and chloride that are vital to your body's recovery. So that's just saying that you want to start replacing some of everything that they've lost. So that goes back to the sweat rate and knowing how much is going out and how much is going in. Um, then on number three on the hydration game plan is to choose the right beverage. So water is the best source of hydration. It's something that we really promote here at PDAML. But however, research does show that a properly formulated sports drink is best when you've been sweating for more than an hour. Okay, so let's talk about that a little bit. We usually tend to say, say you know, try to steer away from Gatorade, try to steer away from Powerade, but there are sugar-free options. So we do promote this idea of wanting to get those electrolytes back into their system, but we would love it if you would choose a sugar-free option. So just be, something to be mindful of. It does say that sports drinks have electrolytes to replace what you lose in sweat. The flavor encourages you to drink and carbohydrates give you the energy for your working muscles. So your muscles are, when you're, especially when you're working out, have been you know, strained and put together and everything like that and pushed and pulled all different ways. And the carbohydrates that are in the sports drinks will help you with that. Um, children should avoid fruit juices like we just talked about earlier, carbonated beverages, caffeinated beverages, and energy, energy drinks immediately before and during activity. Fruit juices can slow fluid absorption and cause upset stomach, and it may also lack sodium. Carbonated beverages such as soft drinks during the active occasion can reduce voluntary drinking due to stomach fullness and throat burn when gulping and lack sodium. So, and then energy drinks, we always just say, especially kids 18 and under, energy drinks are a big no-no for us. But it does say energy drinks should be avoided because many contain caffeine and have high carbohydrate concentrations, which slows the emptying of fluids from the stomach. So at PDA, you know, we always just say, if you can keep your kids away from the energy drinks, they are chock full of caffeine and tons of sugar. So, um, which is how they pretend you have energy. Um, so we definitely agree with that one. And then last but not least on this game plan, they want you to talk to your child about speaking up if they feel ill. So a lot of kids tend to not want to tell the coach what's going on. So 
Um, on the hydration game plan, it just says suffering in silence when feeling the early signs of dehydration can be dangerous. Instead, athletes should be encouraged to tell coaches or teammates how they're feeling so they can get the rest, fluid, and medical attention that they might need. So just encourage your children, you know, speak into them, let them know that it's okay to tell their coach if they're not feeling well. They need to tell another teammate. They need to tell you. Um, if you're out and you're just out for a walk and you're going on a hike with your family, you know, make sure like maybe before you're on that hike, you give them the water and you say at any point in time, let me know if we need to stop, if you need a break, if you're getting too hot. Um, just encourage them to speak up. You know, it, it's okay um, to not feel well, especially when you're trying to work out or do anything. Your body's moving. It's doing all different kinds of things. Um, so we just want them to be encouraged to speak up to their coaches and their teammates or even you if you're the one that's helping them out with the activity. Um, and then last but not least, this is just a PDANO reminder, is that if any of your children are participating in sports, we recommend mouth guards. That's especially important for football, but we're seeing it now in baseball, basketball, volleyball. A lot of different sports are starting to incorporate um, wearing mouth guards. Um, you've seen a lot of NBA players start to wear them um, over the last few years. Um, anything where something could happen where they could fall or where an item could come and hit them in the mouth. You know, we've had kids that have come into the office that a baseball hit them in the mouth and they were just trying to get a grounder. Um, you know, simple things like that being elbowed during a basketball game. And um, so we really think that mouth guards are super important. You can purchase those at any local sports store, Walmart, Target, Academy. Um, we have Hibbit Sports here, um, but you should be able to find any type of mouth guard for any type of sport. We also do make custom mouth guards here. So if you're interested in that, you can give us a call. Our office number is 479-582-0600. And we'll be happy to get you set up to get a custom mouth guard made. We do usually recommend those for the older kids because they grow out of them really quickly. Um, so, but just a recommendation. And if you have any questions about that, do not hesitate to call our office. Okay, so we went over a lot of information. I'm going to drop the link to the hydration game plan from the Kendrick Venture Foundation um, in the comments whenever I get off this broadcast. I just wanna remind you to stay hydrated, stay safe, and we want to just say again, one more time to all of our followers, we really appreciate you watching us every week. I know I have a lot of loyal people who watch every single week and I really appreciate that. Again, do not forget to share this video with your friends and family and you could win one of these 32 ounce Nalgene bottles and also a Chick-fil-A gift card. And like I said, that contest will be up for the next two to three days. We'll put an actual deadline in the the header here in a little bit once we kind of decide when we're going to do that drawing and then we'll do the drawing and the winners will be contacted they're usually contacted via um, Facebook um, but if you have any questions or concerns about anything about what we talked about today as far as hydration any questions about oral health care well I'll be happy to answer those you can always email me my email is amy at smilesorwild.com and again we want to thank you all for watching and we'll see you again soon Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and go visit us on smilesorwild.com.